Supporting yourself on the minimum wage has never been easy, but it keeps getting harder as the economic value of the minimum wage continues to decline due to inflation. If the minimum wage that I earned in my first jobs had been adjusted for inflation in the decades since then, today's minimum wage would be $22 an hour. In fact, today's minimum wage, which is not automatically adjusted, adjusted for inflation, is stuck at $7.25 an hour. It is a simple debate when you boil it down. Workers want to be paid more money, saying they cannot make a living on what is now the minimum wage. And companies need to make a little less profit in order to be good corporate citizens. From the other side, companies fire back. We cannot make any less profit because then we won't be able to provide the job itself. We deserve to make a profit. And even Obamacare is making it impossible to almost double what we pay. All right, let the arena open. Let's let the issue roll. Welcome into Midpoint, economist, national columnist, and professor of business at the University of Maryland, Peter Morisi, and one of those business owners who believes you can pay the employees more and make it work, the CEO of Earth Friendly Products, Kelly Vlahakis Hanks. Kelly, Peter, thank you so much for being here today. Nice thank you so much you. for having me. Kelly, I'm going to start with you on this one right now because Peter's vo uh, views are very well done. We're going to talk about it in a moment. But your company is Earth Friendly Products. You're a privately held company. You have five locations in the U.S., also one abroad, 400 employees, and you recently raised your minimum wage to $17. How yes. can you do that? Because people say, and Peter will, of course, talk about this as well, that for many companies in America, it simply is not the smart thing to do. Absolutely. Well, thank you. You know, uh, we believe very firmly in a living wage for all of our employees. And so we undertook a very comprehensive wage study, and we are able to pay our direct laborers at 120 or 140 percent more than the 90th percentile. And we're very proud of that. We truly believe that at $17 an hour, a family has 35000 to live off of a year. And we believe that's the minimum living wage that a family needs. Current poverty levels are at 19000 and even with the proposed federal uh, minimum wage, you'd be at 21000 a year. So for us at Earth Friendly Products, we were very glad we could take it to 17 an hour. It was a gradual thing that we did at our company over the years. We were at 12, then at 15, and now at 17. And we've been able to do that and still be very profitable. Because, you know, our business model, as, as you mentioned, we have five manufacturing facilities across the United States. We do that to reduce shipping costs. We, we do that, obviously, to obtain carbon neutrality, to manufacture in the local marketplace. But, you know, by doing that and having those five locations, we can still keep our products at a low price point. Okay, and let, me, let me stop you there then on the low price point because, Peter, I need to come to you right now, and you have been very adamant about this, that this may be nice for one company in this case, a privately held company, but for America itself, this simply has a ripple effect that cannot be ignored, correct? Well, what you make determines a great deal as to what you can pay. For example, in the automobile industry, if you wrap it all together with the health care and all the rest, they're paying about $45 an hour. Generally speaking, manufacturing, because it uses a lot of machinery uh, to boost productivity, can pay a higher wage and still be competitive. Uh, the workers they're competing with in Asia, you know, though they are paid less, they do it with, usually with less efficient means of production. It's quite another thing, for example, a fast food operator. Uh, in those areas, these minimum wage workers, the people that take your order, aren't doing very much and they're not using a whole lot of equipment. Uh, there's not a lot of value added in the industry to, 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 divide, to divide around. Uh, and, and as a consequence, you know, if you paid, for example, $10 an hour, uh, 10 hour, 10 10 an hour as the president suggests, uh, the Congressional Budget Office, which is a fairly neutral bunch of economists, I mean, it's not, you know, the research arm of the Republican National Committee or the fast food uh, franchisers of America, has concluded we'd lose, you know, 500,000 jobs. So it depends on what you make as to what you can do. I mean, my university, you know, doesn't pay minimum wage to my knowledge uh, because we're unionized and all that and we pay more. Uh, but we can do that because of the nature of what we do. People will pay a high price for higher education. Kelly, let's ask about the prices here that you have because yes. 
Peter has already said, and many people have said this as well, that if you raise the wages of 16 million Americans four to five bucks an hour, someone's going to charge higher prices and the wages won't be worth what they're worth today. Have you been forced to raise your prices since you've gone to $17 an hour? Absolutely not. So that's a very good point. It's a big part of our company philosophy to create products that are available to the masses. We believe everyone has a right to a healthier environment, a healthier home. So you'll see that our products are oftentimes at opening price points. So when you walk in the markets like, like Walmart and Sam's Club and Costco and so many fine retailers across the nation, you'll see that our products are extremely affordable. And we want to keep it that way. But in taking a look at the compensation that we offer across our company, we also don't pay our executives excessive wages because oftentimes executives are making very, very high wages. Ah, okay, hang on. I'm going to stop you there. I have to stop you there because, boy, you hit a great point that I wanted to make sure that you got to. First of all, let me just ask this. You're okay with making less. Do you make less profit now because since you raised the rates? We're still very profitable. Oh, but but no, do you make less profit? You know what? We've just restructured things and maintained our budgeted profitability. Okay. So we still have plenty of profit, you know, plenty to provide growth capital, to maintain our minimum leverage ratios, and to make okay. a reasonable return to our shareholders. We get it. All right. Okay. You're, you're a private company. We understand that. Peter, I think that that's a point that a lot of people are talking about, executives taking excessive pay here. Isn't that one of the problems here, that if a lot of these companies, if the executives didn't make four, five, eight million dollars, that you could raise the money for the workers and you still could make a profit? Isn't that a nice compromise, if you will? Well, certainly I would be happy to make the compromise if it were possible. I don't set executive pay. Uh, the marketplace does uh, to, to some degree. I, I do think there are just some distortions with executive pay. But if you look at where executive pay is, is really high, it's examples of where you have a very young CEO like Marissa at Yahoo uh, who uh, all of a sudden gets $20 million a year. Well, one of the reasons they can pay $20 million a year at Yahoo is they're paying everybody pretty well at Yahoo because it's a technology company. If you look at where wages are really high uh, for executives, they also tend to be in situations where wages are pretty high for the workers. You know, people like to target McDonald's and Burger King, but remember, they're in the franchise business. They only sell the, the name and the advertising and, and some materials. The individual franchisees, the, the people that run the restaurants, are small business owners and they don't have huge profits and they don't pay themselves huge amounts of money once you factor in that both getting a, a sort of a salary for being a manager and they have capital at play and they have to you know re get a return on that capital just as as your, your business does uh, and also they compete with mom and pop operations uh, who uh, can pretty much hit the same price points and don't make much profit at all and don't pay huge salaries. And aren't they really uh, entry level they jobs pay more as money, well? My bottom line is that if they pay more money, there are going to be fewer of those restaurants around because they will lose money. And isn't it fair to say that those are basically considered by many people to be just entry level jobs? Well, yeah, I don't like that argument, to be honest with you. I mean, a job is a job. And uh, the question is, how much value can you create in the job? I mean, we have whiz bang kids who can write apps and software at 17 and get paid huge amounts of money. Those may be entry level jobs in technology, but th they're creating the value, so they ought to get the cash. I always wanted to be one of those kids, and I never quite got there, unfortunately. You know, it kind of passed I, me by. Go ahead, I would Kelly. Like to, I'd like to add one thing here, Please. because there's obviously the humanitarian aspect to raising the minimum wage, but there's also a lot of great business reasons to do so. And I've spoken about this on many occasions, but those include, you know, increased morale, lower absenteeism, uh, decreased overtime, increased production, decreased turnover. The cost of turnover is extremely high, sometimes 30 or 150 percent of an employee compensation because you've got recruiting and you've got training and you've got an interruption in customer service. So there's really a lot of good business reasons as well to have a higher living wage. In a Would company. you agree, though, that $17 an hour, I've only got, I've got less than a minute left here, that $17 an hour is good for you, but it's not good for everybody? Sure, seventeen dollars an hour is not is not where I'm saying, but certainly I support ten ten. Ten ten an hour, Peter. How about ten ten an hour? Is that fair to be there? Because you've got people rioting right now, looking for fifteen sixteen dollars an hour. 
Well, they could riot all they want. That That's really a political move by the service workers. Uh, it's sort of a part of the show for the election coming up. Uh, 10, 10 an hour, according to the Congressional Budget Office, would cost us 500,000 to a million jobs. The people that got the 1010 would be better off. The 500,000 to 1 million would be unemployed completely. I'd point out also they're not getting just the minimum wage. They're getting the earned income tax credit, which you didn't get 20 years ago. They're getting Medicaid, uh, food stamps. They're getting lots of different benefits from the government. And that's why, although they say they can't eat, they do eat. Uh, and, and, and so it isn't quite all that it appears to be. But 10, 10 an hour was a slogan the president came up with. If he adjusted the minimum wage for inflation to the last time he changed it, so when he approved it last, mm -hmm. it'd be eight and a quarter an hour. I could live with that. All right. We're going to go ahead and revisit this because, boy, we just opened up a bunch of stuff right here at the back end as well. <laughs> Kelly Vlahakis, Anks, and uh, Peter Morisi. Kelly and Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck, and we'll talk to you again. Thank you. Thank take you care. for having me. All right. Take care. Midpoint will continue right after this.